welcome to this video and in this video I wanted to have a look at the asteroid belt and in particular look at some of the key features of the asteroid belt which are the gaps and these are known as Kirkwood gaps and how Jupiter can actually create these. It's not in the asteroid belt but it can still have an effect and create structure in the asteroid belt. So where is it located? Well the asteroid belt is between Mars and Jupiter but it's predominantly the most asteroids there are kind of between two and three and a half AU, where one AU is one astronomical unit, which is the distance of Earth from the Sun. So they're about two to three times further away from the Sun than the Earth is, and they sit just between Mars and Jupiter. Now, the only dwarf planet in the asteroid belt is Ceres, and it's a dwarf planet because it's in hydrostatic equilibrium, which means that it's molded itself into a more spherical shape. If you get small enough or once you get to a certain size, gravitational forces will shape it more like a sphere. Below that, they're not in hydrostatic equilibrium and you get a more like potato shaped sort of structure like a more traditional asteroid. And there are millions of asteroids in the asteroid belt that we know of actually. There could be many more, but it has millions and Ceres is the only dwarf planet there. So if we have a look at the actual asteroid belt and we've observed lots of them, we know exactly where they are, where their orbits are, and it turns out they're not evenly distributed. So they, they don't have the same distance between all of them. It's very uneven actually. So it's not a smooth distribution, like a ring or something. And when you actually plot them with respect to the distance from the sun, and on here hey, you've actually got the y-axis, which is the inclination, which I'll mention in a minute. But the colour here, so the actual yellow, represents that there's more asteroids at those particular locations. So again, you can see that between two and just over three is where the majority of the asteroids are known to exist. Obviously, you can see there's lots actually near Earth as well, near Earth asteroids. There are other groups outside of the main asteroid belt. But within the main asteroid belt, you've got three main components to it. You've got the inner part, the middle and the outer. And you can see that they hold the majority of the asteroids. There are the Hilda group, the Trojan group, which are kind of also related to Jupiter as well, which we can have a look at in a different video. So it's not a disc-like structure. So whilst the asteroid belt, if you look down on it, would look a bit like a, a disc or a ring, it's got a bit of a vertical structure to it, which means it's more of a torus shape. And I've highlighted here that on that previous plot, that is the orbit inclination, which means that the asteroid has an orbit which is inclined to the rest of the solar system. So it will, it will orbit above and below the main orbits of the planets as it goes around. And when you add all of those together, they all have slightly different inclinations. Some of them are quite high, quite low. It will create this torus-like shape. And that's because of these inclinations, basically. It's not a flat structure. It actually has a reasonable amount of vertical structure to it or height. So on to the, the key features then really, is that there are areas in the asteroid belt where there are a lack of asteroids. There are locations where there are no asteroids or at least very low numbers of them. And you can see here that these actually separate out the three components of the asteroid belt. So the inner part, which is the blue here, the yellow orange is in the middle, and the green is the outer part. And between each of those, it suddenly drops off where there's no asteroids or very little asteroids and you get a gap. And uh, these are just some of the, the key ones. Note that There are quite a few other gaps that are not as significant, but these are the main ones, really. And again, you can see that actually the, most of the asteroids are between two and three and a half AU. And then on the y-axis, you've got your number of asteroids at those sort of locations. So you can see gaps are starting to form. And again, it's a key feature here. Now, these are known as Kirkwood gaps. And they are a direct result of Jupiter's orbit and its gravitational influence on the asteroid belt. Despite being a reasonable distance from it, it's not orbiting inside it or right on its edge. It's you know, a reasonable distance from the asteroid belt, but it still can create these gaps in there. And again, highlighted at the bottom of the green arrows is the location of these gaps here. And you can see the numbers at the top there with the dotted lines, 3, 1, 5, 2, 7, 3, 2, 1. Now, those numbers actually represent the mean motion resonance that an asteroid would have at that location with Jupiter. What does that mean? Well, the one I've highlighted here, which is one of the inner ones, 
is a three to one mean motion resonance. And that means that an asteroid that is located at that location will orbit three times for every one orbit of Jupiter. So the asteroid goes around three times and Jupiter goes around once. And the reason for that is an asteroid at that location is closer to the sun and Kepler in motion means that it will orbit faster. So if you have a look at the orbital periods and the orbital velocities of the planets in the solar system, you'll find that the ones closest in are going to be will have shorter orbital periods and orbit faster. And it's the same here. So because the asteroid belt is inside Jupiter's orbit, they're orbiting faster than Jupiter. And so we then get a location, if we move in between the Sun and Jupiter, where you get this mean motion resonance. And this happens in the asteroid belt here, where it's a three to one. Go to the next one, it would be a five to two, which means that the asteroid is orbiting five times around the Sun for every two orbits of Jupiter. And then actually go to the next one and you get a different mean motion resonance there. Now, what's happening there to cause the gap? Well, what, because it's an integer ratio of one another, they will always pass each other at the same point. So three to one, the asteroid will go around three times and every time it will pass Jupiter at the same location. It means that the asteroid experiences a gravitational tug in the same direction and the same part of its orbit. That has an effect of changing its orbit. It's like knocking it off its orbit, really, and it can elongate its orbit and also change its semi-major axis. This then means that any asteroids at that location, it's unfavorable for them to remain on that orbit and they will change. So Jupiter basically destabilizes the orbits of asteroids there and it clears a gap gravitationally, essentially, so it's just by changing these orbits. Now, the, the locations between the gaps, you don't get those resonances. So as you move further out between the, the gaps, the you just don't get an integer ratio of the orbits. So between like three to one, and five to two, you don't get the ratios as you would do. So there's no resonance occur there. So actually the orbits of the asteroids are not massively affected, which means they can remain where they are. And then you move further out and you get to another point when you get a resonance occurring, which will then clear that area out. Now, another good example, which you can see yourself from your back garden, is Saturn's Cassini division. This is a gap in the middle part of the ring, which is caused by the moon Mimas. So it's sort of the two to one mean motion resonance with Mimas. So Mimas orbits around the outside of Saturn's ring. It goes around once, and a ring particle located in the Cassini division would go around twice. So again, you get the same effect where they're passing each other at the same location. They get a gravitational tug, it alters their orbit, it then clears out a gap there because their orbits have been changed at that location. And again, you can see this yourself with a fairly modest telescope um, yourself, actually. So these sorts of mean motion resonances do occur quite commonly in the solar system. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy, then check out some of the other videos.